The next presenter is uh, Stephen Maskers from the University of Liege, Belgium. And he's currently a PhD student of Jumblo Agrobiotech. He will present on a rapid and efficient method for diacryl ketones and sterols termination in fat. So hello everyone. So first I would like to thank the OCS for the possibility to present my work today. So I'm going to talk about the method that we developed to analyze the alkyl ketones and sterols in fat and to introduce and explain why we, uh, we analyze the alkyl ketones. I have first to explain you the interesterification process. It's a reaction that is used, mainly used in industries like food or cosmetics field. And this reaction aims to redistribute the fatty acids in the uh, triglycerides. And the aim is to modify the physical chemical properties of the oils or the fats. In this, it exists two main processes. So with enzymes, which is specific and fast, and with chemical reaction, so less specific. But in that case, it means that uh, some byproducts are, are here, are formed. And this is the alkyl ketones. And why we, um, we decided to develop on the dialkyl ketone, it's a family compound that not so well analyzed. They just for at least method to, to analyze this and quantify. And consider that um, there's no regulation on dialkyl ketones, we decided to merge with the steroid analysis, which is really widespread. And as a reference to compare our method, we compare with the International Olive Oil Council for the quantif uh, quantification of the steroids. And this method, especially for the dialkyl ketones one, the use of solvent are huge and it's time consuming. So it's not uh, possible as a routine analysis and also it's not uh, very green. So our goal was to decrease this, the time and the solvent. So as you can see in material method, we wanted to be more focused on two steps. So the saponification and the purification of the unsaponifiable fraction. So first, the saponification was realized by, um, by microwave to save solvent and, and, uh, and time. And the, the heating up is more efficient than the classical boil. Then a classical liquid-liquid uh, expression was made to extract the unsaponifiable fraction. And then, so this unsaponifiable fraction was loaded on SP. And two, we, uh, we separate the fraction of the alkyl ketones and the sterols. So what is important to notice is that the alkyl ketones are very apolar, so we get this fraction in just 10 ml. And then the sterols, so this method is quite flexible because we can analyze uh, uni uh, only the alkyl ketones and all the sterols. And then after this, uh, the collection of all these fractions were analyzed in GCFID for the quantification and by GCMS for the identification. And at the beginning, uh, each sample was spiked with two internal standards, one dedicated for the dialkyl ketones and the other one for the sterols. First, before to talk about dialkyl ketones, I would like to talk about the sterols part to have a comparison of our method with a reference. On the first bar plot, you can see the quantification of the sterols, so with the IOC, so our reference, and with two conditions. So we so we keep the so final condition of microwave, but we choose two solvents, ethanol and methanol. At the beginning, we wanted to work for sure with ethanol because it's greener than methanol. But, in, but during the meanwhile, of course, uh, the COVID situation arrived and the ethanol price blew up. So it was a good occasion to see the impact of the use of solvent between ethanol and methanol on the uh, final extract. And what we can see is generally the, the, quantifi the quantification is the same. We can see some diff little differences, but this is especially for the really low compound uh, in the olive oil. And especially this one are, are eluded close to the IR1, so the beta cytosterol that can affect the signal of these. And then, so we wanted to also take advantage of the stir measurement 
and to see if the interesterification had an impact on the steroid uh, profile of different uh, matrices. And you can see on the two bar plot on figure four, so for the palm oil and the rapeseed oil, the comparison of the steroids uh, in one part, one side, non sterified and the other part with um, chemical interestification. And as you can see, we can conclude that there is no effect in that case of the interestification. And then, so for the DFK ketones, it was more, a bit more quickly consider that they are not so well analyzed. The library for the match of the different DFK ketones are not present in the classic libraries. So what we did is with, um, we observed a fragmentation pattern for each dialkyl ketone, uh, depending on the chain length. And the length of the dialkyl ketone depend from the length of the fatty acids present in the in the um, in the matrix and triglyceride, sorry. And then this is how we we could identify them. And so to to conclude, it was we succeeded to to optimize a flexible method that able to analyze two family compounds, namely the alkyl ketones and steroid. Thank you for your attention, and I'm ready for all your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That was a great job. Judges, it is time for your feedback and questions. For those in our audience, please add your questions and comments in the chat. Judges, do you have any questions for Stephen? Sure, I can go first. Um, thank you, Stephen. That was really good. Um, was the effect of the inner sterification on the DAK and the sterols hypothesized and um, were the results from the analysis of the real world samples um, in alignment with those hypotheses? So the hypothesis was more for the alkyl ketone, especially that they are a byproduct of the reaction of the interestification with the chemical, the chemical reactions. And we suppose they are not byproduct from the enzymatic way. We checked and we didn't notice yet some the alkyl ketones. So the interest to analyze the alkyl ketones for the moment can be a good marker of which process we use to verify the, as a quality control the process used for the samples. And the sterol, we use this uh, this opportunity because there's no, there's just, I think, one article in the literature that uh, suppose that the interestification doesn't affect the sterol, so we wanted to confirm, and uh, the results show that uh, there is no impact on the sterol's profile. Okay, thank you. Yeah, still, I may ask oh, a uh, oh, question sorry, to you. This is Sneh Bandar. Ah, sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Adam. Yes, please go ahead, Sneh. Adam, are you going or should I go ahead? Uh, you can go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, still want to say, yeah, good piece of very interesting uh, work. Uh, and uh, it has a lot of application and uh, uh, thanks for sharing your uh, your comparison with the uh, uh, on the olive oil, olive oil work my question is more on the dialkyl ketone uh, it may be interesting work and wanted to know whether you had any opportunity to uh, analyze dialkyl ketones by your method in intentionally estified uh, maybe industrial or laboratory samples, and whether that can be used, uh, this parameter or your method, can that be used for optimization or just studying the uh, intentional interestification? Uh, um, so the proposed way we, we do that, uh, because I didn't hear that well, just sorry. So intentional when you want it for, for example industrial estification inter yes yeah. and this parameter can be used uh, and that's why i'm quite interested in that to know whether that can be used to optimize the intentional or industrial 
or laboratory grade interestification uh, and also to know whether the process is complete or not or what's the stage. So this parameter can be of interest. Thanks. Exactly. Yeah, it could be a good uh, good marker, especially because that we noticed. And maybe this, no, but if we play with the condition of interestification, maybe we can reduce the dialkyl ketones because I, I can't assure that with enzyme there's nothing, but on the example that we analyze, they are, we, not, uh, we don't have identified them on the chemical interification, but not with the enzyme one. So this can be very interesting to apply also in an industrial way. And then maybe to apply more in the industrial process, yes. Thanks a lot, yeah. All right, Steve, I have a question for you as well. I'm a room from this. Um, my question basically, you know, the word rapid means different things to different people in different fields. So I guess how rapid is your technique in terms of time and how much more rapid is, is it than a traditional method? Yeah, so of course, if we reduce time, especially the part that we gain time, it's for the um, saponification because we just use 10 minutes of uh, saponification, so very short. And the, the usual time with the classical boiling saponification is 20, 30 minutes. So we earn a, a bit of time. But that's the part that we earn a lot of time, especially with the um, SP, so the purification, because the reference uh, protocol is with TLC, so it's longer time and use more solvent. And here you can have your, your fraction with a lower amount. Okay. But it's still a, a, a quite long process because there's four steps to, to achieve. Right. But we but try still, to reduce. Right, but you're still down to about half half the amount of time of traditional. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's impressive. Uh, and yeah, and if you have a chance, you should send you should send me an email with those DAKs that we don't have in the library. I'll try to <laughs> I'll try to make sure. Okay, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was good.